Okay. We, the, not a big deal, man. We can work this out. There, what happened? Tell no, me what happened. That, that, nothing, nothing happened, man. No, put the gun down. No. Welcome to First Person Defender, where regular people come face to face with unknown attackers. Whoa, whoa, whoa. and fight their way out. This is First Person Defender. Today on FPD, we have Dave, a civilian who's dedicated two decades to firearms training. How good can a trained up person be? Well, we're gonna throw him some curveballs today. Stay tuned. These force on force scenarios use training guns that fire non-lethal projectiles. Dave Barry, I'm grew up here in Mississippi. I got uh, involved in competition shooting through a policeman friend of mine in Louisiana and, and shot basically USPSA for a while. Went to Gunsight in 2000. It was one of the last classes that Colonel Cooper taught. That week turned into, it was basically an epiphany for me about self-defense and the fact that there are bad people out there. You never know what you're gonna get when you get someone that has uh, a lot of experience or a little bit of experience. Sometimes a lot of experience, people get overconfident. He's done a lot of different things, but he's quiet. I'm blessed to have a wife who likes to train as much as I do, so that most of our vacations are centered around firearms training. And I've also recently become part-time deputy sheriff in the county where I live, so my life revolves around firearms and firearms training. Never know what quiet's gonna mean. Quiet could mean he carries a big stick, and quiet could also mean that he doesn't have the ability to command presence in a scene that gets a little chaotic. But we're gonna find out. Well, I hope I don't suck. Hey, man. I'm glad you could make it. What's up? David is meeting with his brother at a quiet restaurant. What happens when patrons settle a dispute? Will David make the right decision? So what's up, man? What's been going on? Not a lot. I've been busy. Busy as hell. I'll tell you what. Why don't you go wash up and uh, we'll get it started. Okay. All right? Get me a beer. Get you a beer? Okay. What kind of beer do you want? A non-alcoholic one. Non-alcoholic. All right. Oh, hey, you Jim? You Jim? I don't, I don't know. Hey, man, I don't know you. What, why you are you guys around my wife? Who? I don't even know Jessica. Well, see, you do know no. her. I knew you did. Dude, no. I knew you did. Dude, I, I have no clue who you're talking about. Yeah, you know. No, no, you <laughs> know. No, 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 yeah. no, no. 911. Uh, let's talk about this. Look, no, look. What are you talking about? Man with a gun. Can I leave? No, you can't let's leave. Talk. Just, Can just leave? relax. This isn't, this isn't about you. No. This isn't about you, okay? Not a big deal, man. We can work this out. There, what happened? Tell no, me what happened. That, that, nothing, nothing happened, man. No! Put the gun down! <laughs> All right. Dave, what do you want me to do? My phone's in there. 911's on on the line. Call yeah. them and tell them shots fired. Put the gun down. Put the gun down. Index. 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 All right, Dave, run me through this. What happened? Okay, so I go to the bathroom. I'm sitting here with my brother in the restaurant. I go to the bathroom, wash my hands, come out, and there's a man holding someone, not my brother, at gunpoint. I don't know whether this guy is a bad guy or this is an undercover cop. Right. And I don't see, I don't have enough information at this point. 
I'm not willing to let him know yet that I'm there with the gun. He evidently had, didn't see me at this point. I need more information here because I really, I'm, I really don't want to shoot another cop. How does somebody tell if it's a cop or not? Well, I mean, I'm looking up here. There's no badge on the chain. There's no badge on the belt. When I first saw him, it was just like a guy with a gun holding somebody at a gunpoint. Yep. And then, so I ducked back down, called 911, put the phone down, and I'm trying to gain some more information. When did you decide to shoot? As soon as he fired. I don't think that law enforcement is just gonna shoot somebody sitting at a table. I didn't see this guy that he shot make any movements like he was going for a gun. Right. You think you made the right choice? Based on the information. We haven't told you what I was, no, if I'm a good guy have, or bad guy. No, you have not, but based on what I was able to pick up and process. I was concerned about you being too quiet and quiet work for you this time. Based on the totality of the circumstances, you did the right things. Cool. So what kind of advice do you have for somebody who would come into a situation that maybe now the music's on in here? Oh, man. Put the music on in here, dark. add another 50 people. And it's dark. A little darker. Yeah. You're able to pick up on all the cues that made it a good shoot. Now, you said you, you dialed 911 back there. Right. Yeah, I said 911, man with a gun at this restaurant and put the phone down. What if we don't, what if we're not talking and the cops are just coming in? and you're still, you've still got the gun on, what are you gonna do, it's in your hand? I'm gonna put it down. Let me ask you a question. When you use this cover, you're right-handed shooter, correct? Yes. That's left-handed cover. Did, yes, you switch, did. did you switch hands? No, I'm not there yet. So what do you say we go through some of that stuff? Oh boy, okay. Ruger is one of the sponsors of this show, and one of the guns they've come out with lately is the Security 9. A lot of value, holds plenty of ammo, good for home defense, could be concealed carry or a great range gun. So we appreciate Ruger's support. Go give the Ruger Security 9 a look. So there have been occasions in force on force training when I've been forced to expose a minimal amount of myself. So what I do is I switch hands, but I not just switch hands, I switch eyes. Now I'm very strong right eye dominant. So I have to close my right eye really hard to minimize my exposure by switching hands and then using my left eye to shoot with my left hand. So this is right-handed using my right eye coming around a left side cover. You can see how much I have to expose of myself to make that shot. Now I'm gonna switch hands and I'm gonna use my left eye and my left hand. And there's substantially less of me sticking out. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So go ahead, do right hand, right side, and tell me how you feel. Look how your leg had to come out. Yep. To get all the way over there to make that shot. Yep. All right, now switch hands. Switch eyes, because so you have to close that right eye hard. Substantially less exposure. Let's take it live fire. Switch hands, switch eyes. Remember, close that right eye tight. Think about slicing that pine, working your way around that corner. Oh. Dead center hit. Do it one more time. How's his exposure, KJ? I can't even see him. Yeah, I see a sliver. You can see a sliver of him. First Person Defender brought to you by Ruger. Gun Dealio smartphone app and Springfield Armory. One of the companies that makes this show possible is Springfield Armory. You know them, you love them. They make a ton of different pistols for concealed carry, a lot of different things for competition shooting. We like their stuff, they help you be prepared. So if you can, go support them. Thanks to Springfield Armory for supporting First Person Defender. I talked with Dave about how to maximize cover. Well, switching hands is one way, but how do we train people to use cover properly? I like a barricade like this. It has big long legs coming off the backside. They run exactly in line with that hard edge of cover. When that leg is there, it keeps people in behind cover. They actually have to lean out to see the target. 
because if these legs weren't here, most people will stand just next to cover and shoot. So switching hands and doing this drill, having a good solid barricade, I've got a piece of steel downrange. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transfer that gun into my support hand. I get my two-handed grip. I get ready to close my right eye because my right eye is very strong. I come out around it. I maximize my use of cover and I aim and fire. I can switch hands back and then I switch again back into my non-dominant hand, out around cover. I watch the sights, I aim and I press. In the restaurant, there's a lot of people seated, so they're low. So that's places I don't want bullets to go. Now, could Dave have taken a knee? Dave could easily move to a knee, use the same techniques, and now he's firing at an upward angle. Guns from strong hand to support hand, minimal exposure. Using a knee, I can fire up towards the ceiling rather than down into the crowd. Just something to think about. Another company that makes this show possible is Surefire. Surefire makes the good lights. When we're talking about dealing with low light situations, it's what you wanna be carrying. Whether it's weapon mounted or handheld, if you want a really good light, take a look at Surefire. We appreciate their support. When do you get involved? And how quick should you react? David is back at the restaurant when things go wrong. Is he quick enough to stop the attack? So uh, I'll tell you what, why don't you go wash up and uh, come back and have some crawfish. Yeah. You want me to order you anything to drink? Uh, just iced tea. Iced tea. Always strict, never a beer. You got any money? No, I got nothing, man. You gotta have something. Dude. You gotta have something. Just back hey. off. Hey, man. Back off. Hey, man. Hey. Get on the ground. D dude. Get on the ground. You, dude, just give me like, just, don't just even, give me like, that's all. Don't even that's all it is. Here. No. Don't touch that. Huh? No. Don't even do it. Huh? No. No. Sir, man. help. Help, he's got, hey, help. Put the gun help. down. Put the gun down. I didn't do no, anything. I, I didn't I got do anything. It. I got it. I didn't put do the anything. Gun down. Don't point a gun at me. Put the gun I didn't, down. I didn't Let do me anything. see some ID. Help. Put the gun it's, down. It's okay. Hey, put the gun down. Help. Hey, Dave, no, you tried to rob me. Put help. the gun down now. Help. This guy had Don't a knife, man. Dave. Put the gun down. Hey, he tried to rob me. Help. He tried to rob me with this big knife here. This guy's okay. That guy tried to rob you? I'm not putting the gun down. This is the bad guy. It's okay. Come on, come on up. All right, listen, call the cops, man, call the cops. I'll call, I'll call. Hey, yeah, uh, yes. Yeah, we're at the, we're at the restaurant there in downtown, yeah. There's a guy who tried to rob me with a knife. Uh, my brother's here, he's got his money. gun on this guy. A little bit of money. You know, you know, wait a minute, just get away. I just wanna, back up, back up. I'm on my knees, what else do you want? Just give me a little bit of money. I'll get out. You don't have to call cops. Yeah, cops are on their way, Dave. Index. All right, tell me what you saw. Came out of the bathroom. I see my brother obviously in some sort of distress, and then I come around the corner a little bit more, and I see someone with a gun on someone who is on the ground. What are you thinking? Well, I don't know what this is still. I don't know if this is interpersonal confrontation or I don't know if this is a law enforcement officer trying to arrest someone. And then as it plays out a little bit more, I'm now picking up on my brother saying, this guy tried to rob me. Well, you had a resource there. You know, you, I'm trying to tell you, no, no, don't worry about it, but I'm, I'm, a, I'm a concealed carrier. It's one of those things, there are a lot of people carrying guns out there. Okay and we gotta figure out how to communicate. Tell me why you didn't shoot this guy. I don't know for sure what's going on. I don't, the only person I know is that you're my brother. I don't know 
why this guy is on the ground and then he's on the ground there's got to be he's looking over here i come around and now there's a guy with a gun over here but i i don't know why he has a gun on the one that's on the ground and i never saw the knife why didn't you shoot him i have no what wasn't there that you needed to to shoot this guy how do you know it wasn't some kind of he was making him beg for his life same scenario just reversed how do you know i don't other than that's when I'm starting to now hear you say, this guy just tried to rob me. So that kind of changes the dynamic. So you weren't so tunnel vision that you could actually start picking up on some other stuff. I was for a few couple of seconds. Everybody is. I'm glad you admitted it. Nobody in the audience will admit <laughs> being tunnel visioned ever. I mean, he turns, he's got the gun, he turns, he looks at you, he says some stuff. Yeah, but he's, keep, up on? he's keeping the gun on that guy for some reason. He's not swinging it towards me. He's not swinging it towards you. He's, so he didn't exhibit any kind of intent of harm towards to you. To harm me or you. Now or this, me. Or this guy. Now, I don't know what this dynamic is. And I just, I need more information. There's so many people carrying guns now. Legally, this is going to be more and more likely to happen. You're looking at totality of the circumstances. And that's what people at home need to be thinking about as well, right? It's right. not just the gun. We don't shoot people just because they have a gun. We don't shoot them because they got tattoos. We don't shoot them because they got long hair. We shoot them because of their intent. One of our goals for this show is to help more people be more prepared. So if you like the show, share it around. And also on YouTube, ring the bell so you can get notified about new episodes. On Facebook, like us and follow the page and you'll see new first person offender episodes when they pop up.